The other day I made a video off Impulse talking about Plessy Knight, a fan who we believed passed away due to COVID. And it dramatically affected everybody. And I'm not going to waste your time if you want the reality of it. But we have privately been confirmed that this story is false. This didn't really happen in the past 48 hours have been hellish for me and as well as everyone else in the community. And I just wanted to say right from the beginning, I 100% believe the story was false. And I would like to give a brief explanation to why I acted the way I did. I saw some allegations of people thinking that I made this up to like, it's a bit like the previous <clears throat> things like the Tyler bit and things like that. And I wanted to like, it's not, it's not clearly not. I would never do something as malicious as make a fake account. That's a staged suicide or COVID or something like that. I don't, I no, And I don't know how to explain it, but I know that I would never do that. And I was shocked that a lot of people were spinning it to be like this very elaborate bit. And they said, Alpharad, why were you so quick to make a video on it? And I said, I opened Twitter and I acted emotionally. And I think looking back, I think it was very natural the way I acted. I saw my mentions were flooded by my entire community grieving over the loss of another fan. So I wanted to do something for that community. I didn't make that video for Plessy Knight. I didn't know Plessy Knight. I made that for the community to let them know it's okay to grieve. It's okay to grieve if you've never met this person. And that's a lot of what my testimony was attempting to be. But I, it's, you know, a lot of people are saying that these, the story looks so obviously fake. And now it does, I agree. But when you're entrapped in that whirlwind of emotions, it's so easily to be completely blindsided and just fooled by it. It's so easy. Joe and I were talking and am examining it, and we believed it. Night one, we believed it. When I made that first video, there was only one tweet from his mom. So, like, I had no reason to believe it. A lot of the damning evidence came after that. So, I don't regret making that video. I'm just upset with what happened after I made that video. And to talk a little more about this, I am joined by Budget, if you would like to say hello. Hello. Um, Budget made the notorious uh, Reddit post on r slash Smash Bros, kind of giving his advice as a medical professional and saying what the red flags were and why this looked so suspicious to him. And this video was initially going to be us trying to instill a reasonable doubt within the fans that we shared, but we have since come into proof that this was staged. And we are going to work through the timeline from two nights ago to right now. And if I can say my case real quick, the first thing that did tick me off was his mom posted very fast on Twitter after he passed away and me, not a medical professional, just said, that's weird, but whatever. And then the follow-up tweet after I made the video, she posted that, um, she posted a thread on Twitter, two tweets related. And my, my brain was like, ooh, that feels weird for someone who's does is new to Twitter and doesn't really know how it works. But at the same time, who am I to interrogate a potentially grieving family. And I think that is what just calmed all red flags to me, was like, why would I press on this family who's allegedly grieving? And Budget, you were saying that's a very natural feeling. Yeah, like, that's how I was feeling when I uh, was writing the post. I, I really didn't want to write it mm -hmm. because I, I when I published it, I sat there for five minutes, just like my finger on delete because I was so like worried that I was fairly certain I was right, but I was also, you know, there's a one to 5% chance that I'm wrong. Then I'm just harassing a grieving family that just lost yeah. their child. And I would not want to put someone through that pain. Mm -hmm. It's the fear of looking like the asshole, really. Yeah. And I would like to, I, you've told me in private, but I would like to talk to you a little bit more on camera and for you to kind of explain the process because this whole experience over the past 48 hours has been the most eye-opening thing to me about COVID as a whole. I feel like I've learned more about COVID by 
interrogating these people as medical professionals, as you and as Alan, CEO of Panda Global, just talking to them about what is the red flag and why does this not add up? So if you'd like to go through your narrative, your initial post for the people who haven't read it, I will link it in the description. But I'm just a little curious to your process and how you came through with this. So my process first was I just woke up that morning and mm -hmm. I saw the um, I saw the hashtag uh, plus night and um, I read through it and I was just I, at first I believed it of course and then I saw the uh, tweet of um, the mm -hmm. mother saying smiley face I'll be okay and that really really struck me um, as anyone in the medical field knows. As anyone in the medical field knows. Anyways, I would like to use this platform or just this little intermission to talk about another question I've gotten. A lot of people have questioned me about the fundraiser for it and think it's a scam. It's, it's not. How YouTube fundraisers work is that all ad revenue from the video goes to the fundraiser and the fundraiser goes directly to the charity or foundation. The money never touches our hands. I have since removed the charity from the, orig the, from the original video because I don't want, I want people to donate for COVID relief, but I don't want them to do it under the impression that that story is true. So I'm going to leave that other video up and I will put a disclaimer in the cards and in the description, but I, I, it's tr I don't want that to go because I think that's important piece. It's an important piece of the history. And I, I don't, I, I don't really know. I don't know. I'm not prepared for this. I'm not trained to do this. I, I posted that video because I, in the moment, I thought it was the right thing to do. Nothing more, nothing less. It was uncharacteristic and impulsive and completely acted off emotion. But in the moment, I did it because it felt like the right thing to do. And I still think it was. That's the thing. I still think it was the right thing to do. I just couldn't have foreseen what was about to come. Yeah. So I'm doing this on my phone. So I'm <laughs> trying to. No, you're okay. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got, I got slightly emotional just because the more I think about it, it's like. <laughs> yeah. And okay. All right. Before we actually get into that, I would like to preface that I don't think Plessy Knight is a bad person for faking I this. And I, 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 I think, made that clear when I said that too. Yeah. I think he is a 16 year old kid who did not understand the gravity of the events he was performing if you will i don't think he's a bad person for being ignorant of the severity of the topics he was discussing i i don't think he was trying to make light of the situation even though he did i don't think any of this was done under malicious intent i think it was a problem full of ignorance and desperation like i've had several shifts unfortunately where children came into there and they did not make it and those are some of the worst days that you can imagine. And I've seen parents react to how they lose a child. And it was never smiley face, I'll be okay. I, yeah. It's, you don't forget their reaction. And mm -hmm. I still, like, I, like, as any medical provider will testify that sometimes you, you can't forget stuff like that. And it sticks with you. And to me, that's what struck me first was, yeah. this isn't right. This isn't, like, grief, people respond to grief in different ways. I would never in a million years expect a mom reacting with a smiley face to her child that passed away within the last few hours. Um, yeah. And especially the timeline of the her is plusy night's final tweet versus the mom's first tweet. Yes. So that was the other thing, too, is when I saw the timeline. Um, so I saw he made his last tweet um, saying that he he was tweeting to other people following um, in conversation saying, you know, I. I I'm going to die, basically. Mm -hmm. And that also struck me very weird because um, you don't know you're going to die of COVID. It, it's not something that you, they, the doctors tell you, hey, you have COVID, you're going to pass away in six hours or so, like he alleged yeah. in some of his DMs. Um, that's not the truth. And to me, that struck as a giant red flag because it kind of struck to me as someone that wasn't familiar with the medical field talking about this. As and, most 16-year-olds would be. Yes. And so... That, and that's when I started doing a bit, a bit of investigating. He, um... Um, as you were, sorry, we're having some technical difficulties, so the editing's going to be choppy, but 
as you were talking about. The other big flag to me was was that you don't know that you're going to die of COVID. And he was sending mm-hmm. out tweets basically saying that he knew he was going to die, and that's just not based in medical reality. The yeah. next um, thing also was he sent out a tweet, and an hour later his mom reports that he dies, which um, just what I know what about the medical process of all this happens. Mm-hmm. So, say, so his mom finds him that he's not breathing. So she should you know, do CPR compressions, immediately call 911. And ambulance would get there, go back, and then the doctors themselves there would run their own code, all that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the whole process of telling the family, that doesn't take an hour. There is literally no way. So that was the next really big red flag for me is the timeline just didn't make sense at all. And And even if you wanted to, like, assume a few things, and let's say hypothetically, this story was based in a hospital. Even the hour of passing to the mom tweeting wouldn't make sense. Because when I talked to Alan from Panda Global, who's a general practitioner, he was saying that they, and you reiterate the saying that they don't give up on kids. And Alan said that the last time he had this happen with a teenager, they knew she was past around the 20 minute mark, but kept trying for about four hours. And that's that's kind of been my experience too. I've seen, mm-hmm. unfortunately, about three codes of children, and uh, all of them have gone above two hours. And yeah, it's just just the reality. It's a lot of those people are parents. Um, we try everything. We hope for a miracle because we um, you don't want to tell a parent that their child died and that child has potentially so much life left in them that mm-hmm. you want to do everything you possibly can to save that. And so that was yeah. another point why I was just kind of like, this just doesn't make sense at all. And that was just mm-hmm. at the point, too, where I decided that um, I really needed to say something because I saw, I guess, getting all this support or like, for lack of a better yeah. word, support and people believing this was real and getting generally upset about it. And to me, it felt kind of like, I know he doesn't mean it that way. I don't think that mm-hmm. um, Knight is a bad person. I think that he just got an over, over his head and didn't realize the gravity of the situation. Yeah. Because in there was a confession from him, and at the end of the day, and he said that he just wanted to be a, a wallflower. He just wanted to lurk. He didn't want to be on Twitter or anything like that. And I understand where he's coming from. Everyone fantasizes about what if I disappeared, but you know, it's a it's a natural thing. But he did it in a way that's so insensitive to current events and. Touching on, like, I wrote four big red flags early before this call. One is how quick he passed in regards to uh, the symptoms showing. Two, the timeline with the mom tweeting. Three, that he never mentioned any doctors or hospitals outside of the diagnosis. And four, um, we did find a phone number to contact him. And we did not call, but we did use the area code to see where they were from. And then we looked up obituaries in the area to see if anyone has passed away. And we didn't find anything. And you even stated that ch- like children at his age do not typically pass from COVID. So it would absolutely make news if that yes. was the truth. Yeah. And yeah, that I, I agree with all those points too. And yeah. And But I do want to reiterate, because I've had tons of people from the Plessy community come to me and say, people have apologized to me because they made me believe this. They came to me wanting me to talk about it, and I did. And that's not on you. You were equally as fooled as me, not one more so than the other. Like, I don't think anyone's at fault for believing this. I don't, I think it's very obvious that it was fake if you're from the outside and looking in. But when it's like one of you, someone in your community, it hits different. You want to act like, I don't want to hear the story and have to become jaded and cynical and think, hmm, is this real? You saw someone in your community suffering or suffered and you wanted to act. And I don't think anyone is wrong for that. I don't think anyone is to blame. I don't think anyone should feel stupid. If you want to feel betrayed, that's fine. Even if you do want to feel dumb, you are right. You have a right to. I'm just saying it's you're not to blame and I'm I don't think I'm to blame and I I just think that needs to be said because um, I do hold a responsibility and I do wish in hindsight that I did a bit more research and got hard confirmation of this before I made a public statement about it 
because that spread awareness to tons of other people about this falsehood. And I will obviously be more cautious about that in the future. And that's my biggest takeaway. And that's the accountability I hold. But I don't think I am at complete fault for wanting to believe a story like this. Yeah. And, and I agree. Like, I wanted to believe it too when I first saw it. And mm -hmm. I debated for the longest time if I should even post anything. Because like you yeah. said earlier, I didn't want to be that asshole that um, yeah. harasses a grieving family. But to me, it was so important that I do. It's just because I know parents that have lost children. And I know parents that or people that have died from COVID. And I just, it, to me, like, I know he didn't mean it that way. But to me, it just felt like an affront to them. That I needed to yeah. give those people that if, it felt like making light of their deaths. And I yeah, needed to not, say something. Not how I thought I would spend my Wednesday. But <laughs> yeah. here we are. Mine either. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for doing this. Because this is just in the leisure of your own time. And I appreciate that. Yeah, and so I, does our whole community. I like. I know it's just from the outside looking in medical. Like, if you're not in the medical field, there's... and there he goes. All right, what part did I cut out? <laughs> if you're not in the medical field, dot dot dot. Like I said, there's just certain things in the medical field that you're just you're only going to know by being a part of them. Like the thing about coding children of how hard we try because we know that life is precious, and just kind of the timeline of things of how things mm -hmm. are typically done. And I felt like it was my duty to kind of say something just because I, yeah, like I, I was fairly sure that this was uh, a mm -hmm. false situation and I didn't want people to be unnecessarily hurt by it. Yeah. So I think that kind of goes through your timeline. And then you and I talked late last night and we kind of came to a conclusion that there's reasonable doubt but there is still that 0.01% that it could be true. And you don't want to mess with a grieving family in the off chance that that is true. Like I can't go to them and say, give me proof your son died. Even if it's real. Like give me the death certificate. Yeah. Like you can't do that. <laughs> that's just like, that's just morally <laughs> incorrect. Um, but something I did send you was um, someone sent me and i would like to say that i've talked to multiple medical professionals and in your thread on reddit multiple medical professionals all came to your side and said this is something sounds wrong and i received a dm from someone who was messaging plusy night account and just said are you faking this and he essentially said yes i wanted out of the internet and just wanted to lurk never thought anything big would come and i believe that why would you he had a four, 300 follower account, and now his account has like 7,000 followers and all eyes on him. Um, but he said, never, th uh, never thought anything big would come of the hashtag, so I just wanted to find a way I could leave it at that was undeniable. So death was what I felt on, fell on. COVID is a real threat at the moment, and so I made it believable that I got it. I feel terrible that there's going to be so many people who have to figure out that I faked it, but I'm not a very stable person in general, and I don't need just sympathy. I don't need forgiveness. I just want to lurk in silence. And then the person uh, messaging him said, why didn't you just say you wanted to leave? And he says, I don't know, man. I just don't. Just let me peacefully forget this ever happened. So I read this, and I asked for video proof just so it wasn't a Photoshop DM, because that was damning evidence right there. I asked for him to record his screen and click around just to make sure it was real. And then after getting the validation, I then posted, or I then sent Plessy Knight a DM and said, hello, we have become aware through screenshots about the validity of your alleged tragedy. We need to come forward with the story, and I'm very sorry to how it may affect you. If you wanted to lurk as you initially planned, I highly suggested simply deactivate this account. We do not want to spread hate to your account, but it will happen upon us coming forward with the story. Please take care of yourself. I don't think you're a bad person. I just don't think you realize the gravity of what you were doing. Please use this as a lesson and take the proper steps to focus on yourself. And he, soon after that, he did not respond to me, but he simply deactivated, and that just felt like the nail in the coffin it's, it's very telling yeah which even in the back of my head i'm like what if this is real like do, i'm gonna feel like such an asshole if this is real because i just don't want to believe that someone would fake this even though it's like clearly the proof is right there and tons of people said hey we talked to the mom this is the story but 
you know, as evidence shows now, that was just him pretending to be the mom. All of this was said over um, DM. So how could we really ever confirm he was the mom? They were like little clues when they wanted us to raise money for just, they said, raise money for coronavirus and not like COVID relief or something like that, which is like, it's a small thing, but it's just like little things like that felt weird. But I was like, I'm not going to press in this grieving period. Also, the um, hashtag where the mom did hashtag of her son that just passed yeah. away. Like, you know, that was weird. Hour, that was that was very telling to me as well. And then in the DMs with me, I was saying, hey, if you want to, if you want us to help you financially, we will. And the thing is, if they gave me a GoFundMe, I would have promoted it, which is the scary part. They didn't obviously, but I would have promoted it. And that's where my accountability steps in. And I need to be a little more cautious about what I fully back, like something like that. And then um, the DMs, I was like, hey, let's help with the funeral funeral costs. And she said, no, we have savings for a reason, as morbid as it might sound. And me, who's never planned a funeral for a kid, you came in and said, that's where health insurance comes in. Yes. You, if so someone dies, you get a lump sum. And that will cover funeral costs and hopefully medical bills as well. Yeah, so lots of little holes in the logic here and there. But when you kind of look at the big picture, it's it's telling. It's obvious. And that's the thing. Everyone who's come at me in the past couple of days has been like, this is so obvious. How did you fall for it? How did people fall for it? The, the answer is because we wanted to believe it. Like you, the people who are critiquing it came into this without an attachment to the community. I don't think anyone in the community is at fault for this. And I think that's the hardest thing to mention because people who feel wronged by this feel dumb. They feel betrayed. They, they just feel stupid. I feel stupid. And the last thing they need is someone coming at them, telling them, hey, you're so stupid for believing this. How could you believe this? You're so stupid. That's the last thing they want to hear. So if you watching this are from the channel, not from the channel, and you thought it was fake from the get-go, go easy on the others because this is a different form of grief than we were expecting to deal with, but still a form of grief. I would like to believe. Yeah. And I, I, I would like to agree with that too. Like um, I w I'm kind of an outsider too. Like I'm very familiar with your channel. I watch your channel all the time. I, I mm -hmm. watched some Alpharad plus, but I wasn't familiar with the um, plusy community. And um, yeah. so I, I kind of came into this as an outsider, not kind of knowing and having a medical background. So that's, yeah. yeah, I think your effort made all the difference because people started linking your thread to me. And again, I saw it like six, seven, eight hours after you posted it. So I was very late on that. But it was just it's like in the back of my head, I felt like something could have been wrong. But why would I want to believe that? Yeah. So I'm very glad that you stepped in. I'm glad that I reached out to you and I'm glad that the truth has surfaced as much as it it just sucks. That's it. Yeah. It just sucks. And I don't feel good about being right either. Like, I really don't. Like, I'm happy that, yeah. obviously, um, Knight is alive and that there's not someone that actually died of COVID. But yeah. I, I don't take solace in knowing that I was right just because it's such an awful situation. I saw a comment on the Alpha Red Plus subreddit that summed up my thoughts really well. They said, let's say this is fake. There, that means two things. One, this kid is alive into our community came forward for something great because it i don't want to romanticize the past 48 hours but it was heartwarming to see the entire community who uses comedy as a deflection like that's what the whole essence of alpha red plus is it's like this ironic depression riddled comedy like it's it's just meta in that sense so a lot of people who make these jokes are clearly deflecting for other things and that's kind of where or that's just comedy in general for a lot of people. And like they came, they stopped. They put all these jokes down, all these bits down that they never normally do. And they all came together to support one cause. And I think that is beautiful. I just wish that could have been for something that was real. But I guess the silver lining is that he's still alive and will live a very long and hopefully healthy life after this. And like I said, I, um, you know, the thing is just mainly mm -hmm. we coronavirus is very, very real and we need to take it seriously. And that's the ultimate yeah. takeaway that I would make from this is that 
Um, just please be safe. Please be kind to each other. Um, you know, I am going to upload another video to this channel of me talking with Panda Global CEO Alan about just proper COVID procedures and awareness because I felt like I was informed about this, just me as a pedestrian. And talking to you, Budget, and talking to Alan, it made me realize how ignorant I truly am of this pandemic. And I can admit that in full confidence. So I would like to do a follow-up video um, later, tomorrow perhaps, and just kind of talk about what, just, just to talk about awareness and how just the actual horror of it that I was even plainly, blissfully unaware of. And I don't think we have anything more to say. I think we kind of cover the whole topic. Um, I would again, like to reiterate that if Plessy Knight ever does return to social media, I do think it's crucial that you don't harass him or anything like that. And I know how the internet works. You're going to harass him no matter what. And that's why I heavily advised him to deactivate his account before he made this, because I know how the internet works. I can tell you guys to not harass someone, but that does not mean you will not do it. It's how it's the internet. So I, I think he should keep his account deactivated, and by God, I hope he does, just because I don't want him to be harassed. This kid is obviously not in a great mental state, and the harassment could push him to something way worse. So I hope, God, I hope he stays off, because people are going to talk bad about him regardless. Like I said, I totally agree. The most important thing is, like I said earlier, we need to treat each other kindness, because you never know what someone's going through, and yeah. you... you don't want to push someone over the edge you don't want to be the reason and you know life's life's important and life's precious and we need to yeah try and just be nice and preserve that for everyone i think with my closing thoughts i would like to just reiterate that anyone who came to my dms informing me of this alleged tragedy anyone who came together in hopes of making a fundraiser anyone who had group chats dedicated to alleviate the pain of your close peers None of you are wrong for acting on emotion. You acted on something that felt true to you at the time. When I made my first video, I did that because everything at the time I believed was true. And now I don't believe that. And here I am updating that and I am retracting what I previously said. And I'm sorry that that came out, but I am not sorry for acting on emotion. I am sorry for not rationalizing my thoughts a little bit more before posting that. I, but it's hard. It's, it's a conflicting place because I think I was right to act. I just don't, I just, I don't know. It was, it was hard and I don't know what the lesson I took from it is, but I do know there is one. Yeah. So I, I really don't fault you for making a statement. Like it was all over Twitter. It was supposedly yeah. one of your fans that had died. And I, I said, I don't blame you. I don't blame anyone that was sad or believed that it was true because yeah. you, most people don't just look on the internet, see someone that has passed away and your first thought is they're faking it. And that's, yeah. that's not my first thought either. I really didn't want to have that thought, but it just kind of yeah. happened that way. But thank you again, budget. So endlessly, I will put your initial Reddit thread in the comment section below. If you want to add an edit to it, because there is definitive proof on it now. Um, but thank you for watching this far. Thank you for understanding. And I'm just sorry that this happened. This, you know, if I made a video on this or not, it was going to happen. The same thing happened, regardless if I made a video on it. It just got bigger because I made a video on it. So I am just sorry that this happened. He disconnected again, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, you're back. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, thank you for the Plessy community who has been understanding. And as hard as this has been for you guys, for me, for Plessy Knight, who is obviously just not in a good place, I am just sorry for everybody. And I don't really know how we can grow as a community because I can't see this being a repeat offense. But I... I just feel for everybody, really. That's what it is. This just sucks. It just sucks. 
that's it. The takeaway ultimately, I think, is just just be kind to each other, just treat each other with respect, yeah. and just just be kind to each other is what I would say. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Be good to each other. <laughs>